Friends, I have not done a 24 hour readathon slash how much can I realistically read in a day in so long. And so I figured we could grab the day today and just read the day away and see how much amidst all of the other things I have to do, have some work to do. I've got sprints, which are going to be great for the reading. I need to get this nail fixed because I broke it. And so my nail tech is coming in a little bit to get this fixed. Then I have to go out, run a few errands. And so the next 24 hours are going to look quite interesting, but I thought it would be really interesting to see when I intentionally carve time to read amidst all of the other things I have to do. How much can I realistically read? So I have got some, I think, great books lined up for the next 24 hours, things that I'm looking at. I don't know for certain what it is that I'm going to be reading, but I have some good options. So I'm going to walk you through them to see if I'm able to get through all of them, maybe some of them, and what the end result is going to be. So I hope you guys are ready for the coziest yet most productive next 24 hours because it's going to be, I think, a really, really good time. I love doing 24-hour readathons. You guys know it. There was once upon a time when I used to do them really intensely on a monthly basis and I used to put up 24-hour readathon videos every single month so consistently. And back then I used to stay up not sleep or sleep very little. I found that that particular dynamic to a 24 hour readathon was really damaging, not only to my sleeping patterns, it was really, really bad, but also to my enjoyment of books. And so I found that because I was so sleep deprived, it was affecting the way that I was reading, consuming media, the way that I was taking in the information. And a lot of the time it didn't really pan out the best ways for certain books. And so today I am planning to sleep, okay? We're going to maybe stay awake a little bit longer than usual, but our girl does need to get some sleep. So sleep is going to ensue. Reading is going to ensue. All of the productivity. I'll keep you guys updated as the day goes along. I'm very excited about this. But first, let us talk about which books I want to potentially read in the next 24 hours. But well, before we get on with today's video, welcome to my kitchen and thank you so much to Thrive Market for partnering with me today. Now this is particularly exciting because Thrive Market is an online membership based grocery store that guarantees savings on every single order. You can choose to pay your membership monthly at 12 or annually at 60, but their mission is that for every annual membership paid, they match that for a person in need, which I absolutely love. Now, I'm always on the search for healthy swaps for things that I typically get from my pantry or fridge, be it sauces, snacks, noodles, what have you, but things that are actually good for my body. And Thrive Market makes that really easy because they've got over 90 categories to browse from. So regardless if you're gluten-free, paleo, keto, vegan, they have an option for absolutely everybody. So it's definitely worth the time if you want those high quality foods and ingredients entering your household for a much better price than your typical retailers. It really does seem like I can't go to the grocery store these days without a price going up from the last time I went. So it's a really great way to protect your pocket whilst also having stable prices that are not changing every single week. Several cool things about Thrive that I absolutely love is the fact that if you find the item somewhere else, they'll price match it so that you can guarantee that you're getting the best price available. And if you don't make your annual membership back in savings, meaning $60, they'll credit you the difference because they are that confidence that you will see those savings when you are buying your items. In this order alone, I got beverages, I got snacks, I got popcorn, dried mangoes, cooking wines, noodles, sauces, just a bunch of everything. I managed to save over $56, which just about makes up that annual membership up in savings. Not to mention that not every item is available at every grocery store. So this is a really great way to guarantee that you're getting exactly what you want delivered to your doorstep, which is super easy too. So you don't even have to go out anywhere and you can put that food on the table no problem. Orders over $49 also ship for free, which is amazing. And they use carbon neutral shipping, just in case you're wondering. So if you are interested in checking Thrive Market out, I will leave them linked down below. You can click the link in the description or you can go to thrivemarket.com slash melreads to get 30% off your first order and a free gift worth up to $60 when you join a Thrive Market today. And now back to the video. Let us take a few books with us. Let's go to the kitchen so I can give you the rundown of what may potentially be happening in the next 24 hours. The kitchen is my favorite place to update the vlogs. You guys know it is literally the place that I think I update the most aside from my office or even probably more than my office. But here are the things that I'm looking at for the next 24 hours plus one other that I don't have physically, but let me give you the rundown. So I'm currently reading Sweet Bean Paste for another video project. And so I have, I think like 97 pages left, 98 pages left. So finishing this would be lovely. I wouldn't necessarily update you entirely on this book if I were to read it in this 
video, but I would give you like the page count because I think I'm going to tally the pages as I read them. And so by the end, we can have a nice little counter of how much I realistically was able to read in the next 24 hours. But for the things that I actually want to read and talk about in depth in this video, Villains Are Destined to Die Volume 5. You guys know I love this manhwa. I read Volume 4 last month and I ordered Volumes 5 and 6. And I have been meaning to pace myself because I don't know when Volume 7 is coming out. So I do have Volume 5. I think we can get this read in the next 24 hours. Ride by Ali Hazelwood. Listen, I said that my mission this month was to read my book club pick well before the live show, before the new month even starts. And so I think Bride by Ali Hazelwood will likely happen in the next 24 hours. And I'm so excited about it. So I think this can be a really, really good one. We'll see what happens with this one because I'm also filming a spoiler filled reading vlog for this on Patreon. We have got Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. I have been diamond painting. I started a new project, which I can actually show you guys. And I have the audiobook for Emily Wilde. So maybe I can listen to the audio. Maybe I can read physically. Maybe I can alternate between the two. We'll see what happens, but I've been really excited to get this read too, especially because I've been on a wave of reading some not so great books and finding some DNFs. And so I really just want like a good time for the next 24 hours. So these are looking a little bit like concrete plans. We'll see how much of everything we get read. Maybe I'll jump in between books. I'll keep you guys updated on that. And then let me search the proper name for this because I always forget what it's called. So as I was browsing Libby recently because I found some new manga and manhwa recs that I wanted to see if my library had, I found this manga that I think looks super adorable called A Man and His Cat. I have never seen this. I have never seen anybody talk about it, but I thought it just looked so damn adorable. And the synopsis for this one, it's about a kitten that languishes in a pet shop, unwanted and unloved. Even as his price drops with each passing day, no one spares him a glance unless it's to call him names. Is most shocked of all when an older gentleman comes into the store and wants to take him home. And so you guys know I have two cats. Anything with cats to me is very special. And so I'm thinking maybe this can be a good one. We'll see how much of it we're actually able to push through. I'll keep you guys updated and let's make a little yogurt too because I haven't had breakfast yet. It is 11.32 a.m. And so I, first of all, need that brekkie moment. And second of all, we're going to officially start the readathon at noon. So in 30 minutes or so. So we're going to time it. I'm going to start that little stopwatch and I'm going to tally the time for the next 24 hours and whatever we get read. Cool. But let me show you before I get anything else done, my current diamond painting project because it's so beautiful also. We've got a cat. We've got a cat who always needs love. A woman and her cat. That's us, Vin. We could have a manga volume. First of all, the outfit, baby, the outfit. We have got some dress bands. I love them. We have got the H&M shirts that I showed you in my last weekly vlog. And then I've just got a little flannel moment, some nice little chanclas. They're like Valentine's Day, but it's fine. Does it matter? But the diamond and painting. It's an underwater train. I got this from Diamond Art Club. The artist is Mrs. Butter D. It's the exact same artist from the last diamond painting I was working on. Let me show you it because I finished it not too long ago and it is so stinking pretty. Like the end result was just absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Just the renders for Diamond Art Club are otherworldly and the canvas itself is so high quality. And so I finished this one and now we've started a new project. So depending on how things go this weekend, and if I'm up to the task to listen to an audiobook, then I do have Emily Wilde. So we'll figure it out as we go. Also, I just finished exporting a video. So that's done as well. And now it's just a matter of waiting for my nail tech to get here to fix up this situation. First order of business, some breakfast before anything else happens.
different things are happening right now. There's a construction happening in one of the apartments near me, so you may be able to hear that. The sun is also super bright. I'm glad it's a sunny day, but goddamn, has it been difficult to find good lighting today, so I hope this is somewhat good. I, first of all, got my nail repaired. It's fixed, and so that was super quick. It was just 20 minutes. An hour and 17 minutes into it, and I have finished a man and his cat. This was so adorable. I cannot believe I hadn't heard about this before. I haven't seen anybody talk about this, but it was just so endearing and adorable. If you have pets, if you like cats, if you like pets in general, this is such a heartwarming read. And all of the progressive interactions between Kanda, a man, and Fukumaru, the cat, were just so lovely. It was like the perfect boost of serotonin. And it reminded me so much of my own early days with having adopted Vin. I'd never had a cat in my life. I'd always been a dog person. And so to have adopted a cat for the first time, it was a huge adjustment. There was such a learning curve to it because I didn't know how different I guess the care for a cat would be to a dog. And so it took a lot of Jackson Galaxy videos. It took a lot of articles read and videos watched, but we got there and now I've got two of my own. So I absolutely loved this. We follow Mr. Kanda as he gets to a shelter and he sees this one cat that nobody wants to adopt. Price has gone down many different times. And it seems like the only person who gives this cat any grace, any love, any affection is one of the workers at the shop. And so Mr. Kanda walks in and he immediately goes, this is the one I want. And he immediately calls the cat lovely and adorable, which is something that the cat has never been told before. And so we do get to see the line of thought from the cat himself and everything that the cat thinks, feels, wonders, experiences as he moves from a shelter to being adopted for the very first time. It also kind of establishes a little bit of a conversation of older cats typically don't get adopted as often as kittens because obviously people want to experience the early stages and they want obviously the adorable look of a kitten and that's okay but elder cats and adult cats deserve all the love too when it comes to adoptions and so it was very heartwarming to see an older cat be adopted in this manga and then on top of that you see obviously again all of the learning curves with him not knowing what he needs from the litter to the litter box to the toys to the food to even leaving the apartment for the first time after he adopts the cat and he doesn't want to do so because he's like, oh my God, how's the cat going to behave? What's the cat going to think when I leave? I know for sure when I first adopted my cats, I was like so afraid. As, as dumb as that sounds, I was like so afraid to leave my apartment because I was like, oh my God, what is Vin gonna do if I'm gone for longer than an hour? I can't leave. And so I know for me, the, the first few times going out were super scary because I was like, oh my God, what happens if she climbs up super high and then she falls and I'm not there? And I was like always thinking of the worst case scenario and so to see all of that like word by word moment by moment painted in the manga just brought me back to reminisce about the initial first few days and weeks of having my first ever cat and so I thought this was so wholesome and obviously the callbacks that Mr. Kanda our main character makes to his wife and how he's felt lonely for a really long time and this is the first time that he's coming back home with a cat waiting that he feels like he is walking into a home, that he feels like he has got company, that he feels like he's got somebody there with him, and life suddenly doesn't feel as glum as it used to, and so I loved this. This was like the perfect wholesome start to the reading today, and so I'm glad that I read this. I did immediately borrow volume two. I was literally browsing all of the volumes on Libby because I was like, can I can I get volume two immediately? And I did. It's right there. I've got a bunch of holds on Libby and nothing's coming in. So this is like the only thing I've been able to borrow right away without having to wait. The other manga that I was recommended quite recently about cats as well is Cat Plus Gamer or Cat Gamer, Cat and Gamer. I have not yet started it because I did get a physical copy of it because the first volume is a 12 week wait and that's come down from a 20 week wait and volumes two and three are actually shorter holds. So one is coming in two weeks. The other one is coming in at four weeks. And so I just got the physical 
physical for it. So you guys will see me read Cat Gamer very soon as well. So another manga about cats, but I genuinely think that it's like the perfect boost of serotonin for kind of like a down day. So that was a perfect way to start it. I am going to go out though real quick because I want some ceviche and I want some chorizo that I don't currently have on my fridge and freezer. And that makes for like very quick meals for me, especially at times when I'm going to be busier. I think we can go to the deli, get myself some lunch for today, probably get a coffee while I'm there too. If there's not a long line, because sometimes the waits in there are so long, you stand there waiting for a coffee for like 20 minutes. And I want to do all that today. I kind of want a quick in and out run. And so let us go do that real quick. I'm going to come back home and to put up a video, which is a weekly vlog. And so I need to handle all that. And then we'll head into our next read, which I believe is going to be Emily Wilde because there's something about the book that's calling to me. <laughs> and a video has gone up. I had to make the thumbnail for it. I actually took the thumbnail this morning, but I just put that video up and now we have got lunch served up. I'm so excited to eat this. You guys have no idea. And so I'm glad that I went out, ventured into the wild to get the food, fetching my water bottle to have it handy for lunch, but also going to have a poppy thanks to Thrive Market because honestly, if it wouldn't have been for the fact that I got it through them, I wouldn't have been able to get it here. So I'm going to drink this as I get my meal in and ooh, should we read while I do this or should I watch something? I typically watch something as I'm eating because I don't read and eat. It just gets, uh, it can get messy and I'm afraid of like damaging the book. So I don't know what to do, but at the same time, like I do want to read. And so I'm going to bring over Emily Wilde if I end up reading it. Cool. Book has been acquired. Let's sit down to eat. <laughs> of very poor lighting. Welcome to the office. I am about to start reading sprint on Patreon, which is why you can see the timer being set up in the background. I was doing the dishes real quick as I was listening to Emily Wilde's audiobook because I had a pile of them. And so I was taking care of that before we moved on to anything else because I also have to cook dinner. But I got to chapter, well, I was going to say the chapter <laughs> number, but it doesn't have one. It's written like journal entries. So I am on 31st of October on Patreon page 96 been listening to the audio it's really good did have to speed it up a little because the narrator's cadence and her speed was very very slow and so i am listening to it at 1.5 speed but we basically follow emily wilde as she is compiling information on the fearful to make an encyclopedia of fairies it is something that although there are books out there that contains certain relevant information on fairies there is nothing quite like what she's compiling and so her research is quite unique. The way she is writing the book itself is very unique. And so she's been traveling to several different cities, countries, towns to be an observer and to interact with the fair folk, see what they look like, see how they interact with humankind and vice versa, and see what their kind of personalities are and what defines them and what differentiates them from each other, what the hierarchies are like. And so she has recently gotten to a new town and is 
soon as she gets there, she's singled out for being a woman in the research realm. She is a professor, an adjunct professor, but mostly a researcher. And so immediately people are like, this is not what we were expecting. Who is this lady and what is she here to do? And so immediately people are very standoffish and some of them are less willing to help than others. And so while some town folk are very nice to her, others are not so much. It not only goes to the extent of giving her burnt food, which is a thing that happens, but also verbally stating their distaste of Emily. And so she is there with her dog Shadow, which I absolutely love and everybody does too. And so she's there performing her research and it seems like she's quite detached when she does perform her bouts of research. And so she doesn't get involved with townsfolk. She doesn't get involved in specific stories or specific cases, even for the people that may require help. But it seems like this is the very first time or it alludes to be that she is willing to kind of walk past her typical boundary and help in ways that she hasn't in the past. And so I quite love that about the book because there is a little bit of a mystery hanging in the air. Something about the book tonally and structurally reminds me a little bit of A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. And so I think in that regard, I really am enjoying the book. And then for some reason, <laughs> I for real thought that the man she was talking about called Wendell Barnaby. I thought that was like an old crusty man who was trying to steal her research. It turns out that's the academic rival that will at some point, I believe, turn love interest. And so I was quite surprised when he crashed the party, okay, against her, her wishes. And he just gets to the town she's at with two assistants. And he's like, I'm here, baby. I'm about to help you out. And when she was like, oh, like this man's like handsome and he's like very charismatic. I ran out of battery, but once new happens every once in a while. But yeah, it was like totally not what I was expecting just based on the letter that she got, which was one of the first few like interactions that we saw with Wendell. And so I was quite surprised that this was the love interest because attitude wise, not my favorite. And so I am enjoying it. It's a very cozy book, gives very much small town vibes with a mystery happening. Then you add the fair folk aspect to it. So it gets a little bit whimsy. However, I am not necessarily like loving it. And so I'm thinking for the nighttime, I can switch to please hold. Thinking I can switch up to Bride by Ali Hazelwood because I deserve happiness and I cannot prolong this any longer. As I was listening to Emily Wilde, I just kept thinking about this. And so we're going to switch to this and we'll see where the bride journey takes us. I'm very scared because I really am hoping to love this book. And so I hope I do. <laughs> like it wouldn't take too many assumptions to guess who fell asleep and just woke up and if you guessed me oh my god how did you know it is 4 17 a.m i don't know if you guys can see that i fell asleep at like 11 something almost midnight and i just woke up i still have my makeup on desperately need to take this off and then on top of that i fell asleep without my mouth guard on which i'm not supposed to do but thankfully i did sleep with my wrist brace on i just took it off but i did sleep with that on at the very least because my carpal was bothering me, but I need to update you on bride. <laughs> I need to take this off. I don't know if I should stay awake or go back to bed. I'm like, this has never happened before that I've actually woken up. So let's take the makeup off first and then make decisions. But I'm like, might as well just stay awake and read, right? The logic might not be logicking, but it logics. Kind of. <laughs> just setting you guys on the tripod real quick. But I should not be this surprised that I fell asleep. And yet I am. I 
I'm like quite shocked. I'm more shocked than anything that I did wake up though because I typically wouldn't. And so I guess I'll take advantage of that, maybe read so that I can like properly make this <laughs> something more akin to a 24 hour readathon than I typically would because trust baby that I would be ooh, very asleep at this point regardless of the scenario. And so that's how we're doing. I also have had this makeup for longer than I'd care to admit. So it is fully time to take this bad boy off because look at that. Look at that nose. It's shiny. Okay. The product is broken down and we just need this off our faces. So let me do this and like properly wake up and also brush my teeth and all the things because I didn't even do that before I fell asleep. And I'll come back with an update as soon as I'm a little bit more awake and I shall give you <laughs> a proper update on Bride, which so far is so good. Hallie Hazelwood just knows what to do. And so just give me a second and I'll be right back. in the litter box you may be able to hear that but makeup is off skincare is done and i low-key am a little bit ready to sit down and read some more but let me update you so far on bride because i did start this and i love this as i suspected that i would and we'll see how things kind of pan out as i keep on reading but so far i am 86 pages in so i'm about to start chapter six it's already so good so bride's setup is that an alpha werewolf low moreland would convene in a marriage of convenience with a super important councilman's vampire daughter named Misery Lark. And so these two enter this arrangement as a means to kind of patch over the very tenuous relationship between the werewolves and the vampires in this world and hope that with the new change in legislation and with the way that things have been going recently and the fact that they've attempted this sort of marriage before but it hasn't worked out, it's like a desperate attempt to keep things peaceful. And I really didn't know how the book was going to start. I thought we were going to start with, I guess, the setup leading up to the wedding. But I think it was genius that the book started out with the wedding. The fact that we start out with Mystery getting ready to wed a man that she's never seen before, to engage in this dynamic when she is so far removed from the vampire world. So when Mystery was very young, she was sent to the human world as collateral. So if anything were to happen, then she would basically be killed because of of the vampire's actions. And so she has been living in human world for over a decade now. And so she finds herself in this very interesting limbo of I don't fit with the humans because I'm not human, but then with the people I'm supposed to be fitting in, I also don't because I have rarely lived with them and their customs and even the language sometimes, it still feels somewhat foreign to her because she's not engaged in that a whole lot. So I thought it was genius that the book starts out with her literally getting her makeup done for the wedding because it was so different to what I was expecting that I immediately was like, oh my God, yes. And she's got a twin brother, Owen, who is incredibly sarcastic. He's got like a bunch of jokes about the wares. And it really does seem like although these two species hate each other, they really don't know anything about each other because they live in opposite sides of a river. And so they really don't know anything about their species, about their customs, about how they work on a societal level. And it seems like there are too many assumptions happening on both sides. And so we immediately start out the book with Misery's twin brother cracking some jokes about, I hope you've got a lint roller and a toy so that they can play fetch and you can get the fur out of your clothes. I am not gonna lie, I did laugh at that because <laughs> it was a little bit funny. But by the time that Lo and Misery do meet, it's very clear <laughs> that they're mates and I'm so excited about it. It's honestly making me regress to like 16 year old me because this is all I used to read when I was 16. And so this is is quite great. I already love obviously the angst that inherently comes from a union like this from two people that are not meant to be together but they end up being so and so I can't wait to see how that's going to develop. Misery definitely has a little ulterior motive as to why she is over at the werewolf territory and why she even 
even initially agreed to marry Lo, so it's not as simple as, yes, dad, I'm complying on my duties of faithful daughter. It's definitely so much more than that, so I can't wait to see how that pans out, but also I can't wait to see the point when they actually do get together, what that's going to look like, because I think it's going to be incredible, because the chemistry and the tension is already great, and it's full of like the little tidbits that make a paranormal romance, in my opinion, so angsty and so good, down to the fact that he hates, or she assumes so, that he hates the way that she smells. And she's like, did the shower not help with the scent? And he's like, no, not much. And she just starts assuming things and she starts kind of storing things away. And so it lends itself for the most perfect confession scene later on. Of like, no, actually your scent drives me crazy and I fucking love you. And so I can't wait to get there. <laughs> when the time is right. So this is really, really good so far. And I am gonna get some more reading done before I officially, I was gonna say head into bed. It's about to be 5 a.m. What bed am I going to? I slept for five hours, which is honestly not the worst thing to have ever happened. But I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go to bed at what? 7 a.m.? Girl, come on. And so at this point, I don't know that I'm gonna get any sleeping done. We'll see what happens. But I will set an alarm just in case because I, I know myself. And so there's that. But that's the update so far with Bride. I'm really, really loving this. I'm glad that I picked it up and I don't know that I'm gonna finish it in this video but I am definitely gonna get you know further ways into it so that I can keep you guys updated on the journey. I also love that Vin absolutely yeeted herself off the bed and that was like such a hard crash onto the ground. Baby are you okay? She's she's chilling but that was that was a hard drop. Just want this to be on record. I'm setting an alarm for 8 a.m. Oh if I can click on it that would be lovely. I'm setting an alarm at 8 a.m. because I don't trust myself but I am about to sit down and read some more because I want to see more of Low and Misery. Let's go. So with four hours left of the readathon, let me show you the timer. It is 8 a.m. in the morning. I did sleep two hours, I'm not gonna lie. I did take a little nappy nap from five to eight. Well, bitch, no, that's <laughs> that's three hours. I don't know why I thought it was two, but we've got four hours left of the readathon. We're 20 hours in. Vin is totally scratching the armchair. This light is too bright, but hello. Bride was read a little bit more of before I went to bed, and I am a hundred and I can't I don't have my glasses 126 pages in I want to get to at least like page 200 or 250 so we'll see but good morning figured we could do since it's bright and early in the morn is to make some tea because I don't want to drink any coffee I refrained from getting coffee yesterday at the deli because I was so tempted to do it but I have been having jaw flare-ups recently and I can tell that I'm gonna have to go to acupuncture this coming week and since I have the week off it's gonna work perfectly but I have to go to acupuncture to get some pain relief and to get some medicine shots to the jaw including anesthesia and arnica which is what we typically do for my temporal mandibular disorder. Acupuncture should be a good time for me to kind of reset the whole thing and allow, you know, this to breathe a little bit. So much to think about for next week, but I don't want to drink coffee because of it. I'm, I'm again, refraining from doing something that is going to make my jaw feel even worse. So a cup of tea, warm lemon ginger tea with a little bit of honey is going to do the trick. So let us make that so that we can have a nice little warm drink in the morning. It's also going to help with the nose because I'm like, it's like recently awake nose, you know, where it kind of sounds congested, but it's not that. And so it's going to help with all the things and it's going to warm the soul. So why not? is too much. This book is too much. This book is too much. Ali Hazel, what you did this a little too well, my friend. Oh my god. Oh my god. I just like the record to show that he just marked her. And he said that she smells like she's his. And that is the sort of crap that I love in these types of books. So call me primitive, but I do love it. 
and it's about to hit. There we go. One hour left of the readathon. I have been reading Bride. Obviously, I've just been sitting here and reading. I'm on page 257. I don't think, I mean, in the hour I've got left, there's just no way that I'm going to finish this, but we'll see how far into it I get and how much more I'm able to read. And then I'll give you a little rundown of, of everything. I'm having a great time. It's so hard to stop reading to give you guys an update. So I guess when we close out the readathon and we hit that 24 hour mark, I will come back fully showered because I'm still in my pajamas. I'll come back fully showered and give you guys like the final update, the final tally of pages and everything. But this book is every bit as good as I wanted it to be. I'm like loving this a lot. We are quite literally about to hit the 24 hour mark. Shall we wait for it? Shall we await the monumental moment? 24 hours, friends. How much can Mel read in 24 hours? Let's find out. A girl is freshly showered, okay? I feel like a full human now, dressed, showered, ready for the day. Because I've got other things to do. Alex is coming over today and we're going out to have a little work date. I am going to be working on editing this video and then also reading what I didn't read to finish Bride. And then I also really need to finish, I forgot where I left it. I really need to finish Sweet Bean Paste. And so because I didn't do those things over the last 24 hours, like these will be ready. And so we're gonna have a little productivity session together in our favorite coffee shop So that's gonna be fantastic But let me give you the final tally of what I read in these past 24 hours So first of all the proof the timer, okay 24 in one second and I I think I did a really great job actually So for the man and his cat it was 148 pages So let's tally that up 148 pages plus for Emily Wilde's encyclopedia of fairies I listened to a little bit more of this as I was getting ready for bed last night and I was taking on my makeup, brushing my teeth because that was a long endeavor and I got to page 120 and the things with Wendell I was not expecting even though there were certain things mentioned in the book I was not expecting them to pan out in the way that they did or for things to be looking the way that they do so I'm really excited to keep on going and see how their relationship continues to develop and what further discoveries Emily Wilde is able to make for her encyclopedia. That said 120 pages well 119 because i'm starting at page 120 so 119 pages and then for bride which i need to give you a final update for i got to page 308 so that's an extra 308 pages so realistically how much is mel able to read in 24 hours the answer is 575 pages which is honestly not bad in the midst of going out to get food coming back doing things for live shows tidying up taking care of the household playing with the cat I also didn't mention that, but I went and signed the extension contract for my apartment. And so that also happened. Needed to double check everything, sign contracts and stuff. So that also happened in the last 24 hours. And so I'd say it was pretty productive, all things considered. 575 pages is still really, really good. Maybe no books were finished aside of a manga volume, but I am literally like 90 pages away, if that. I think it's a little bit less actually, away from finishing Bride. But Bride, <laughs> let me tell you something. Unless a meteor falls, falls from the sky and hits me in the head, this is gonna be a five star. There is just a huge understanding Ali Hazelwood has of this genre of paranormal romance and what the people want. And she's delivered on everything, okay? The gentleness yet slight protectiveness and possession from an alpha werewolf, which I absolutely love. I know for a lot of people it may seem primitive, but I know for me, if it's a well-balanced act of both, where they are maybe a little bit possessive, but that is balanced out with, I just want the best for my mate. I want to protect my mate. I want to make sure that my person is good and I really love them and the love and the gentleness all also shines through. That to me is spectacular. And so that she is nailing. The very aloof yet in the know and super smart main character is also something she nailed. I'm loving Misery as a protagonist. Her slight bouts of sarcasm and kind of like backhanded comments are just some of my favorite moments in this book. And the way that her and Lo mesh together in a bout of tension and understanding in ways that obviously their kinds don't seem to display. And so I really love 
the, I guess, mutual agreements they've come to that they are not at all what they were expecting and not at all what they were expecting from each other's fellow species, but they are so much more and they appreciate each other for that. And there's a huge bout of respect that comes from it. And also one of the biggest things is really the fact that both of these people are extremely selfless and they've been put time and time again in the position of having to put themselves aside so that they can take care of other people or so that they can benefit the greater good. And when it comes to that, they kind of commiserate on it. And I think mutually so without explicitly saying it, they want to make that load lessen for each other. And I love that because it's such a beautiful display of relationships when you are willing to take part of your partner's burden and vice versa. And you just want to make life a little bit easier for each other. I just love that. And so that already is so good. And then when you get into all of the, not tropes necessarily, but all of the scenes that come with a paranormal romance, especially in a vampire world, werewolf dynamic where she feeds from him, where he has to mark her, where at some point they'll have to do it mutually if they want to complete some sort of mating bond, where again the urges and the instincts kind of supersede everything else sometimes, but not in a way that takes away agency. And I love that about Ali Hazelwood because I have read plenty of paranormal romances, particularly in the werewolf realm, that really strip the female main character of all of her agency, of all of her consent, because it's just my nature to be an alpha male. And so I love that she is refraining from stepping into all of the pit traps of this genre. And I love how low, although yes, overprotective sometimes, he is willing to allow Misery to do her thing, which I absolutely love. So honestly, everything about this is working for me. The world building kind of reminds me a little bit of Underworld, maybe not not to a T, obviously, but there are definitely things that I'm like, oh, reminds me of one of my favorite movies and I'm so excited. Down to the politics of the world and how all of these political relationships are so delicate from the werewolves to the vampires to the humans and how the humans are in the know of said creatures. And I love that because there are loads of paranormal romances where they live in, in, in seclusion and they have to hide from humans because humans can't know about us. And that's okay and that's fine. But I love that in this book, everybody is in the know of each other and that's what makes the tension run so high and everybody has their own respective territory and it is because of that that they need to form these alliances and these collateral situations and all of these stipulations so that everybody can remain safe and cohabitate quite you know quite peacefully and so I think she overall really nailed this and I really hope she puts out more things in this round because it's simply too good the amount of times I've been losing my mind like this man literally told mystery when she was drinking his blood to take whatever she needed take more he really said take me for all i can give and i i all about lost my mind and so this is fantastic i love this i'm having a great time and i'm definitely finishing this today because with this left there's no way that i'm not going to and that's it for today friends that is how much i can actually realistically read in 24 hours not pushing myself too hard still getting some sleep still doing other things outside of reading still taking my breaks taking it slow that that is what a realistic, I guess, 24 hour readathon looks like for me. Whereas in the past I've done so well, again, pushing myself and it was fun. It's not sustainable to do so very often. So this was fun actually. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you reach the end of the video, let us leave a moon emoji, whichever one you want down in the comments for Ms. Bride. So let's leave some moon emojis. Comment down below. Have you read, enjoyed, disliked any of the books that I mentioned in this video? Do let her all know down in the comments. What are you currently reading? I'm always dying to know. Let her all know all of that as well. Subscribe if you haven't done so already for more content like this. Patreon is always linked down below in case you guys want more exclusive content, videos, a spoiler reading vlog for Bride. If you guys are interested in that, that's something that's going up in the next few weeks after I'm done with like all the things that I need to get done first, but it is going up. I have been filming it kind of simultaneous to this vlog. And if you want live shows and a book club and just a bunch of fun things, Patreon is always linked down below alongside the rest of my socials. And yeah, I love you guys so much and I shall see you on my next video. Kisses, hugs, forehead kisses. Love you all. Hope you're having a great day. Bye-bye.